The level of censorship on big tech platforms is reaching insane levels. If you haven't noticed, I'm afraid you just haven't been paying attention. But there's an unlikely hero emerging, and it is the Bitcoin Lightning Network. How, you ask? Today, we'll find out. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur at Bitcoin Club, an all-around raging capitalist. And I'm excited to dig in today to the world that is the Bitcoin Lightning Network, uh, but extending what we typically think of it as. You know, we typically think of it as this layer two uh, solution on top of Bitcoin that establishes payment channels and allows for near instantaneous, nearly free transactions. This is what enables Bitcoin to become not just a store of value, but also a proper medium of exchange. I've done entire videos and I have a whole playlist that goes into more about the Lightning Network. And so if you are brand new to it, I would encourage you to check those out first. But today I wanna to go into how the Lightning Network can also enable better censorship resistance when it comes to things like social media platforms, and in particular today, we'll talk a lot about kind of content creation, things like podcasting, etc. There's some really, really interesting things happening as it relates to content creation and the Lightning Network. So you won't want to miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is nothing short than a pleasure to have you. And for those new to the channel, and I know there are many of you, about 80% of you watching right this very moment are not currently subscribed. So if you like this content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our merry gang and growing gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including wallet tutorials, uh, you know, lightning network topics such as this, running your own node, mining, news analysis, you name it, I cover it. That is how this channel works, all things Bitcoin. But with all that out of the way, let's flesh out some of the problems with the big tech platforms today and talk about how the lightning network may be able to solve them. So the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, you know, censorship, right? The stifling of a free flow of ideas. I don't really care where you are on the political spectrum. If you haven't noticed additional censorship uh, over these last few years, you really have not been paying attention. Uh, and it's become striking, right? It's not just about the topic that we're all thinking about. Uh, it's about a variety of different topics throughout society. Um, you know, you systematically have political connections with big tech platforms that push and propagate certain narratives and stifle others. And again, doesn't matter where you stand on any of these, uh, it should concern you to see free speech of any kind being stifled. So there's that big issue. There's also the issue around uh, content creators having historically never really owned both the distribution and monetization of their content. I've heard the analogy that it's like building a house in someone else's backyard. You don't really own the underlying land that the house is built on. And so, you know, content creators of all flavors, whether you're a podcaster, a YouTuber, uh, etc., you know, you're building these communities in these closed networks that accrue network effects that make it really, really favorable to the platforms. So they're able to take a massive chunk of what might be ad revenue uh, or, you know, delist uh, some of your content because of whatever, right? And so there's um, massive downsides to this. And so you think of those two elements, you know, distribution, i.e. being able to reach individuals who value the content you're producing, and then monetization, being able to uh, generate value from the value that that that, that's being created, you just kind of can't have both. Like even creators who use open protocols such as email, right? You know, you have a big email list or RSS feeds for, you know, podcasts and things like that. Um, these are open networks, but even then you ultimately fall into uh, closed networks for monetization, be that PayPal, uh, be that, you know, Google AdSense or what have you. Plus, if we're being really honest, it's difficult. Even if we object to a lot of the things that we just said, it's really difficult to separate ourselves from these massive platforms that have built such commanding network effects. Uh, I'm going to reference this great article from Kevin Rook. This was from just a few days ago. 
um, entitled The Lightning Network's Next Big Use Case. And one of the critical quotes in this that I'll just read straight to you is, despite the deteriorating experience, users stick around, big platforms, because the value of being connected to billions of other users is still greater than the inconvenience of annoying ads, high fees, censorship, and restrictive policies. And he's exactly right. So where does the Lightning Network come into play to help address these issues? First, in terms of censorship, it's a censorship resistant uh, layer on top of Bitcoin. Now, that's not to say that censorship can't be into Lightning depending on how the network topography uh, you know, develops and depending on how you kind of interact with and route yourself through this network. But by design, it is a censorship resistant network. Um, there, you know, if set up properly, if apps are built properly on top of this, and we'll talk about some examples in just a moment, no one can stop information from being conveyed through these different lightning channels. And indeed, we have examples like Zion, uh, which JP Sears has been uh, very involved in and others that, you know, brands itself as a decentralized social media network built on Bitcoin. Uh, and we'll talk about that further. For content creators, it now gives you the ability to embrace the open monetary protocol that is Bitcoin and by extension, the Lightning Network. And so imagine if you were to have a podcast or whatever you know source of content you're producing and imagine suddenly charging a subscription fee, right? I mean, 95 plus percent of your listeners or subscribers would immediately go away, right? Because, you know, there's just not that many... Uh, folks who are willing to pay a subscription. Maybe they are, but it's hard to sort of identify who is and who isn't. So just imagine instead of that, instead of this kind of fixed upfront fee, imagine being able to, you know, tip your favorite creators or perhaps stream payments in real time based on how much time you actually consume. Now that starts to get a lot more reasonable for a much wider range of that audience who isn't about to fork up you know, a hefty kind of upfront subscription fee. And so as Kevin covers in this great piece, you know, by integrating open networks such as Bitcoin to get the monetization element with open networks such as RSS feeds and others, email, et cetera, to get the distribution element, you now have the best of both worlds. For context, there's over 4 million RSS podcast feeds set up today but only about 3,000 of them are on Lightning. And so what Lightning would bring to that is, you know, a simple integration and the ability to receive Lightning payments, whether in tip form or kind of micro streamed, depending on how that content creator wants to uh, work things out. So let's now shift and talk about some of the very interesting examples of this being built out, uh, some of which is in the works, others of which are fully built sort of platforms that are getting their initial user base. And so Kevin provides this great list. This is certainly not exhaustive, but it definitely hits on some of the bigger ones. And what I'm planning to do is in future videos, I'll go in more depth uh, to some of these, starting likely with Zion. But let's just go quickly from the top and I'll try and flash up um, kind of what this looks like as we go through. So Fountain, basically lets podcasters earn and receive messages from their fans. And so you can basically, you know, send a tip along with a message, you know, maybe at your favorite part of a certain show. Uh, and this is really useful feedback, right? It, you know, not only allows content creators to monetize uh, in a new way, it also enables them to know like what specific parts of a show did folks like or not like. So very cool stuff there. Stacker News is basically like a you know long kind of feed, almost Reddit style feed of content that allows anyone to share content uh, and tip for things that are useful. And so as you can see, you know this includes things like news articles. Uh, it could include you know research. It could include just dank memes, right? Like you know various sort of information. And you can come in and kind of. Uh, tip, you know, individuals if you think the content is useful. Uh, MASH is currently waitlist only, um, so it's being built as we speak, and it will let content creators uh, earn directly from their fans. So, you know, similar to some of the other uh, kind of um, efforts that we've discussed. Albi is quite interesting. So e you can tell each of these uh, are taking a slightly different take and flavor 
on what this uh, looks like and how it integrates you know, into our, our lives on the web, uh, Albi is taking a kind of browser extension path. So Sphinx started out as a kind of chat system on the Lightning Network and has continued to kind of build out its feature set to really aim towards this kind of broader social media platform. And so you can see some of the features here, you know, encrypted messages sent over the Lightning Network, no central servers to collect your private data, no one can remove you from the network, you can send Bitcoin instantaneously. And so as you can see, you know, this is available on the App Store as well as on Google Play. And then uh, these kind of social media platform plays are typically going to require a node, right? You're running a node uh, that is essentially managing these different messages and or payments back and forth. And so, you know, in this case, there's light dedicated, uh, each of which has different kind of monetization um, methods, which as you can see are pretty, pretty darn reasonable. Uh, or what's very cool is you can integrate this into uh, your Bitcoin node if you already run one. So for those who run an Umbral node, um, you know, you may already be familiar that in the app store, you can actually add a Sphinx Relay app. Uh, so very, very cool there. This one is definitely uh, quite far along and I'll probably do a future video uh, on Sphinx. And then Zion is going in a very similar direction. You know, the social network built on Bitcoin. Uh, some of you may have seen some of the marketing that is supported by JP Sears, uh, which has been pretty, pretty darn funny. And again, you can see, you can kind of reserve your node. So this is still, so this is currently kind of a subscription uh, model where you can join different communities, start building your own, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, progresses. I think the $12 monthly subscription may be, might be uh, a little prohibitive for some folks, uh, but you can see like what's, you know, why is it that they're charging this, you know, it's for the uh, it's for the node cost, and so it'll be really interesting to see if they uh, pr if they provide a app in Umbral or other node implementations if folks are already running their own nodes. Uh, one piece that's not on the list here is Breeze Wallet. Um, so this is just kind of a little bit random, but uh, Breeze was one of the earliest Lightning Wallet. Uh, providers that built in some podcast functionality. So I'll show you just a quick live example of what that actually looks like so you can orient to uh, what it all does. All right, so here is the Breeze app, uh, the Breeze wallet. It is, I believe, still in developer mode. So it'll kind of ask you if you go to download it, um, you know, to ensure that you understand that. Uh, here's my wallet, but if I click on this menu in the top left, you can see that there is this podcast option. And so this is really, really interesting. If I click into this, um, I'm able to use the discover uh, feature. And indeed there's a number of podcasts you can see that support lightning tips uh, that have been integrated here. So, you know, maybe I'm interested in some Brett Weinstein and you'll see these couple options at the bottom, right? You can do, you know, different amounts of sats uh, and boost them. So you can kind of uh, paste a message, you know, hey Brett, right? Um, so that would be like a tip that you can attach a message to. You can also stream sats, um, you know, 10 sats per minute maybe. Uh, and so, you know, we can go, go on our way there. Now you may ask like, why would I wanna do this if it's, you know, anyways free? Well, right now, of course, it's very much the beginning. We're gonna see these business models adapt as we go forward. You know, imagine a world of absent of any advertising, right? That you have to intrusively listen to. Um, uh, you know, in, in this and instead the content creator is able to monetize their work and, and value that their content's creating uh, in alternative ways. So that's just a simple example of what such an interface looks like in this case in the Breeze wallet. Um, but again, I'll do future videos where I go into others and show what those look like as well. All right, friends. So with that, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. All right, my friends, there you have it. This is really, really exciting stuff. Again, to recap, we talked about some of the problems that are just getting worse in terms of censorship with big tech platforms and social media. Um, and if you're a you know, content creator and there's more and more people are pr producing content these days, um, there's just really historically no way to own both distribution and monetization. But now that we have the Lightning Network, 
information and micropayments are able to be streamed you know, instantaneously back and forth. And so this unlocks brand new business models as well as censorship resistant apps that can ultimately replace things like Twitter uh, and indeed the very platform that I'm uh, speaking on as we speak. Now this will be a big transition. Um, we've talked about some of the different names that are building in this space and I suspect we will see a lot more. This is gonna be a huge theme as we go forward. So it'll be really, really fascinating to see how this unfolds. Uh, I'm planning to do future videos, particularly on uh, things like Zion uh, and or Sphinx, um, just to kind of go more in depth. But I'm curious to hear, what do you think? What are some of the issues you've experienced uh, with traditional big tech? And do you think that the Bitcoin Lightning Network is a potential solution? Um, what are your thoughts? Leave me your questions down below. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. I hope you found this valuable and interesting. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. Leave a lightning tip if you so desire. Uh, I'll have a QR code on the closing screen in just a moment. Uh, but for now, we'll leave this here. As always, my friends, every sat counts especially if we can unlock brand new business models and censorship resistant apps. And until next time, I'll see you then.